Hello and welcome to this DEFCON 2 2v2 War New Tournament. And we're in the qualifiers today with team, uh, what are they call again? Cat and Fodder Friends, consisting of Dargon and I Bite You. No, wait, hang on. Is that right? Yeah, I think it is. And they're up against team Blitzpaw, consisting of Blitzwar and Yukipaw. Uh, Dargon and I Bite You, they're, uh, they're on, uh, they're on NATO. We're on Ripple today, so NATO opener, 101st Airborne, airdropping some guys there. That's a very conservative airdrop. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, some Aero Scouts going up here, behind that. The rest of the deployment, Pocobra, Chaparral's, Mortar for Smoke, which is always good to see, some Supply and a CV. And then in mid, we got I Bite You, who's brought a fob. And he's going down mid with the uh, National Guard Scouts, Scouts, Bradley Recons, uh, backed up by lots and lots of stuff. So three, three Stingers, Toe 2, more Bradleys, more Bradleys, Pivads, Chaparral, uh, and a CV, and also CV for Delta with uh, an arrow scouts and a sniper. So these guys are not going to get to mid first, which makes things really quite difficult for them uh, because, yeah, I mean, they could try helo drop the mid with the... It's tough with these divisions, basically. They could try helo drop in the mid, uh, but then you'd have to cover that with ASFs. So it's not easy because, like, this is a plus two, right? And these are plus ones. Uh, having said that, I do prefer this side. Uh, no, I don't. I prefer the red side. <laughs> Switch it to our opponent's deployment. The red side's better because if you put a recon unit here, you can see this whole zone. And if you put a recon unit here, you can see this whole zone. So it's very difficult for uh, blue to do anything there without smoke. And over here, it's sort of a bit more even. I mean, blue has some additional buildings here, but red has this forest, uh, this little bit of forest which is in the zone. This house is in the middle, and it can access this. So it's a bit more even here, a little bit blue favoured here, but really red favoured here. Mid seems to be about even, it's hard to tell. So Blitzwar with his fourth, signature fourth, actually going really ham on Alpha, he wants the whole thing. Um, and he doesn't seem to care at all about Foxtrot. Usually you see people focus Foxtrot, but Blitz is actually focusing the sides, so he wants both sides, and Yuki's going to slowly try to take Foxtrot. But because they're against 24th in the middle, Yuki's going to arrive at the same time as I Bite You. So, yeah, more uh, more SPWs. More SPWs. And Stralos, Metis. So he's going ham with his, uh, with his SPWs, but only two infantry there. Stral Conquers, and they've got a fob for the Rocket RT. But only one fob, so they'll probably run out. So we'll cast the game, and I'll do it from this perspective because I'm already here. Right, so they're off, and I'd like to take the time to thank the generous channel joiners. They're making all this possible. I'm casting a lot of DEFCON 2 games lately, and that's tanking my channel algorithm because I'm releasing multiple videos a day because there's like there should be 45, 48 qualifying games in like three weeks. So it's a minimum of two vids a day, but now it's going to be three because people didn't play anything for the first week, and now they're playing them all. So... Um, yeah, thanks to the channel joiners, I can afford to, to to cast those and not really worry about the views. Don't have to worry about the views. And they get members exclusive videos, they get the videos early, etc. Uh, if you don't want to pay money, that's fair enough. This is a video game. Uh, the um, Just like the videos, just leave a comment. All you got to do is, is write GG if you can't think of anything. Or you could uh, write BG if you think it's a bad game. And that makes YouTube recommend the videos to more people, which counteracts the negative effect I'm getting from releasing so many videos. But this is really a labor of love for me, uh, because I think everybody deserves to have their games cast at least once. And uh, yeah, it can be quite frustrating. You know, you put your heart and your soul into playing in a tournament. You put yourself out there and nobody even knows you did it. Uh, sadly, there's not many casters... I mean, I, I seem to be the only one who've cast any of these games. A lot of people have uploaded their own perspectives, so Blitz 
uploads his own, as does uh, Artaqua. Um, you know, like some of the games they play. Um, as does Emperor Nate. And yeah, the SPW spam is doing quite well here. So you, you need you need helicopters to try and deal with this, or at least just like one good tank. But then the one good tank can get sniped. So th this is quite a powerful strat because the problem with the helicopters is then that's what the three strolls are for. And uh, he's brought them at max vet, so he got fifty percent accuracy. Uh, Bradley CFE went down over here, and yeah, this was always going to be a tough game. I consider Blitzpaw to be the strongest team in this tournament. Um, and uh, sadly for uh, Cannon Fodder friends, they've been put into the toughest group in the tournament. Not only are they against Blitzwar and Yuki Paw, but they're also against Hippie and Team Man Plays, who you might have heard of. Um, Hippie you might have heard of. I've never heard of Team Man Plays. <laughs> and um, yeah, so so it's, it's a tough game. And, you know, uh, I have been told that if it's a slow game, I should just speed it up a bit. Uh, this is this is looking pretty pretty dire for uh, for red here. They've uh, for blue even like they've lost basically every zone. Uh, so now it's just a question of like can they get back in? So these Bradleys, you know, they come in forwards, but there's tanks here, and the TABVs definitely beat the tanks. Blitz has invested in some cubs. Yuki already had two Osas there, so CV goes in, but there's no way that stays alive. So down it goes. The tick has stopped, but. Yeah, so Dagon wants to try and get back in here. And he's got Meep Meep Abrams. Um, and the Strike Eagle. So the Strike Eagle doesn't do anything and then flies across mid and then gets evac'd because there's 10 million AA there. So <laughs> that was a shame. This MiG AA is dying because the Cobra has better guns on it than the MiG. Big airplay there. Lots of planes went down there. Uh, but it's... Uh, yeah, so I like the smoke. The smoke is good. Smoke the corner, get in. You need to deal with this, though, because it'll see you go in. Uh, I don't think they know about it. So Dagon's bringing the RT. Um, and Blitz is just shoring this up. He, so there we go. Dagon got in. Dealt with that. And the tick's gone down to a plus three. But the smoke's got to keep coming. And sooner or later, they're just... Okay, yeah. So that's that's one way of doing it. The other way is you MLRS the mortars. Because these are just infantry mortars. So they'll go down pretty quick. Or you can buy a tube to hit the mortars. You know, an Acacia. Uh, something like that. Um, so this, this can go back in now. But it's plus four. And I buy two's having a tough time. Because he's against one and a half people, basically. Because Yuki Paw's entire force is here. And Blitz is also on the left. Blitz is really good at using these SPW-70s just through the forest. Just sending them all through the forest. I'm surprised he's not done it here. But you see he's doing it over here. And that's very difficult to deal with unless you've got helicopters. Which, to be honest, the blue players do get. But it is difficult to deal with. you gotta you got to keep your eyes open. Um, and that's kind of what Forth is about in 1v1. Get there first. And then shenanigans for the rest of the game. <laughs> So I buy two, you know, buying buying the Abrams, but it's Abrams against T80BVs, and it's like base Abrams, National Guard Abrams, which get shot once and then go down to low cohesion because they're disheartened. So it's very difficult. This is probably a bit too expensive for what it is, given how fast it loses its cohesion. But you see that, you know, they're, they're already low cohesion, and that makes them kind of useless. But I guess their base stats are pretty decent, so they're actually not that useless on low cohesion. MLRS coming in on that push. It's a good push, but there's just not enough, uh... Like, so you need some artillery preparation. Like, this should have been rt to quite a while ago. And as the Abrams go down, you know, it's tough. Uh, over here, Dagon has got in. Has got in. So, need some supply for this, because these mot shots will kill that Stinger, no doubt. And, yeah, I like this infantry coming around there. It's a good play from Dagon. Blitz's Zikrongs are about to get through the forest. So, I don't know what the plan is. But, oh, he's on the road. He's on the reinforcement road. So that one makes sense. This one, a bit less so, but I guess he probably saw the Apache and thought, ooh, <laughs> don't want to reveal. So, the MLRS, you know, we got we got two RM70s and two Grads. Um, it's hitting the CV location, so this thing's got to be careful. Uh, oh, okay. So they've realized, okay, so it's not there. It must be behind the house. 
It must be, because where else could it be? This thing could literally see everything except behind the house. So he's hit, he's aiming for behind the house. Uh, and this is going to go down now, presumably. I can hear it shooting. Nope, that was in mid. And yeah, it's very difficult for I bite you. Uh, that Zikrong's went down. Although, progress has been made here. Progress is being made, but they've got three minutes. And uh, yes, yeah, so this T8BV might go down. It's getting hit from two sides. Smoke's in time. And yeah, just really good team play from uh, from the red side. And they've just played a lot more games. I mean, that, that really is all there is to it. You play more games, you get better at the game. So someone like Blitz, you might look at his profile and say, he's not actually played that many games. He's a Wargame Red Dragon pro. He's got a lot of games of Wargame Red Dragon. Um, he's like been uploading a video every day on Wargame Red Dragon for the past... X number of years, so he's, he's very, very good at Red Dragon, and this is a very similar game. It's really not that different in terms of spending your units, using terrain, what the units are, what they do, you know, idiosyncrasies in the game system. So the CV manages to get in, but it's too late. Um, yeah, so pretty rough, pretty rough group for these two to get put in, to be honest. They've had a rough time of it. Just comes up with my profile. You see Blitz. He's played a few games in ranked. Um, and then Dargon, you know, eight games in ranked. I buy two, zero games in ranked. Whereas Yuki Paul, legit, I can show you his profile. He's like rank five or something. He's played a lot of ranked games this season. A lot of ranked games. Um, like orders of magnitude more. So if you think about Dargon has played eight games and I buy two has played zero in ranked. Right, so what is what is 221 divided by 8, right? <laughs> so it's not even 10 times more, it's like 30 times more ranked games. And that's just this season, he played more last season, so it's not going to be a fair match. But these are the qualifiers, and sometimes you get put into the group of death, so GG. Please do let me know what you think.